Σήκρα δεν αυτό γευθάμενον της αρκός αυτού και τούτο προλαβό της Αγίας ευγόης. Ο Άρτης της είναι επικράτη, συναντήσας η Χάρτη, επικράτη, Listening to Vexed, a program on the Ephesus School Network. I'm Andrea Bacchus, your curator through biblical literature and its world and culture. Just as a museum curator selects, acquires, cares for, repairs objects, and discovers frauds and counterfeits, I'll be sifting through our world and culture for examples to help us better understand. The biblical text. This inaugural episode of Vexed is dedicated to Dr. Benjamin Bangs, a man I deeply admire and whose generosity of spirit has made this production possible. Welcome to Episode 1 of Vexed. Today, I'd like to talk about the name of the program, Vexed, why it was chosen, and what is its meaning. The program name Vexed was chosen in honor of the great St. John Chrysostom and his Paschal homily, in which he writes that Christ's victory in death has vexed death, has perturbed death, has embittered death. Vexed is the older English translation of the Greek word epikranthi. Vexed comes from the Latin vexare, which means to shake, jolt, or toss violently. It's interesting that in ancient languages, original meanings tend to refer to concrete physical things, The abstractions, the figurative usages come later. Today, in keeping with the original physical meaning, one could be said to have a vexing headache, something physically distressing. Or one could speak about a vexing problem, something puzzling or difficult to solve. You might say that you are vexed by the noise your children are making, annoyed, irked, harassed. You get the idea. The Greek word epikranthi is the star, so to speak, of Chrysostom's Paschal homily. Epikranthi is the aorist, the past tense of the root word pikreno, which means to make bitter. In the original, pikreno had a physical meaning. It meant to cause the stomach to be bitter, to give a stomach ache to. In the homily, When we hear Epikranthi, Christ has nauseated Hades, has given Hades such a stomach ache that it has thrown him up. The imagery is powerful. This is how literature, good literature, conveys its message. The choice of words, the poetry of the words, and the imagery conveyed tell a memorable story. Just as Chrysostom took the content of his homily from Scripture, his understanding of Christ's Pascha from Paul's letters, he also took the language he uses in his Paschal homily, the words, from Scripture. Epikranthi is found heavily in the book of Revelation. In Revelation chapter 10, verse 10, the narrator is John, who is being given command by God's angel. We hear, And I took the little scroll from the hand of the angel and ate it. It was sweet as honey in my mouth, but when I had eaten it, my stomach was made bitter. Read Epikranthi. Chrysostom's usage in the homily is the same as its usage in Revelation 10.10. God's word as irritant, God's word as irritant in that it is judgment against the hearer. 
and judgment is inescapable if you've heard the Bible. We also find epikranthi in the Old Testament, in the Septuagint, which is the Greek translation of the original Hebrew text. Pikreno, in its grammatical forms, is the translation of the Hebrew mara, which means bitter. We hear it in the book of Ruth, for example. In the story, we have Naomi, a Judean, and her daughter-in-law Ruth, a non-Judean, foreigner, a Moabite. In chapter 1, verse 20, the women of Bethlehem address Naomi. And she says in reply, Call me not Naomi, call me Mara, for the Almighty hath dealt very bitterly with me. This is a good example of how names in the Bible have meanings, and there is often an ironic twist. When we hear the Bible in English, we do not hear the meanings of the names. Ruth in Hebrew means friendship. The root word in Hebrew for Naomi means grace. In the story, the foreigner, the outsider Ruth, proves to be a friend to, a grace, a gift to the insider Naomi. Can you hear how the meaning of the names adds richness to the story? They help tell the tale. So coming back to Chrysostom. Chrysostom was formed by scripture. His mind was formatted by the biblical text. We'll talk more about Chrysostom's homily soon, but in the meantime, this program hopes to vex you with the biblical text and the way it turns our assumptions and our modern understandings upside down. If you're listening and you're provoked, annoyed, or irritated, that's a good sign. Till next time, this is Vexed. Vext is a production of the Ephesus School Network.